Welcome back, Superman. Uh. <laughs> I hope you're having a good week. How could you not be with all this exciting Superman stuff going on, right? Well, last night, Henry Cavill finally got to speak out publicly on the Happy Sad Confused podcast with Josh Horowitz. I stayed up late to watch it. Um, you know, I didn't pay to watch it live, but or broadcast live. But it was really cool that they got to do this in front of an audience. And I think Henry deserved to do that for his first public conversation about this. So he can feel the love and excitement, you know, with just a small group of people that represents all of us fans. And I just want to go over some of the highlights of the show. I recommend watching it. It's about 45 minutes or so. I'll link it in the description so you can watch the whole thing if you haven't seen it yet. But um, let's go over the probably the first thing that like everyone, you've probably seen this video. It was, I saw it before I even got to watch the whole thing last night and Zack Snyder actually sent in a surprise little message for Henry Cavill and people are absolutely excited about it. So let's watch it. Henry, I have a question. When we first did uh, Man of Steel and we were doing the flying shots for the first time and we put you in the belly pan or on the wires, uh, I can't remember which we did first, did it feel odd to be, you know, just there in front of green screen, doing your flying, you know, shots, you know, with us just touching the camera and uh, you having to act like you're flying, but, you know, before you had ever seen what it might look like or what it might feel like, was that, how was that? Was that odd or, and did you expect it to turn out the way it did? So that's my question. Um, I can't wait to work with you in the future. And you are, of course, the greatest Superman ever. Uh, let's, of course, hear what um, Henry Cavill had to say about the video. He's a lovely man. Yes. He's a lovely man. And I'm, I'm enormously appreciative of, of um, everything he's, he's done for me, uh, especially by casting me in Man of Steel. Um, those are uh, formative memories of mine, uh, career-wise. It was when everything changed. And I remember them fondly. Yeah. I remember fondly hanging above fields. <laughs> in, it was Illinois, and uh, uh, just outside of Plano. Um, amazing memories, and a lot to be thankful for. So, uh, Zach, if you're watching um, on one of these many cameras, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, my friend. So, of course, that video of Zach sending in this really heartfelt message to, I mean, interesting question, and of course, heartfelt um, little you know message at the end there. I can only imagine how happy he feels right now for Henry Cavill. And like Henry said, no surprise, he's very appreciative to Zach for putting him in the position of being able to play Superman and give us the greatest Superman of our generation. And no doubt the fans are really, you know, holding up, like really getting excited about the part when Zach said, I can't wait to work with you again in the future. So I don't think he's, I don't know if he's, I don't think he's necessarily saying that this is going to happen with, within DC, but maybe just, again, they can work on something else together. If that does happen, if, I mean, that would be amazing. So just really cool that they reached out to Zach and that he sent in that message for Henry Cavill. The overall interview, I just want to say, I think this is probably one of the most, um, like, joyful interviews I've seen from Henry Cavill. Not to say that he's, I mean, he laughs and, you know, he's he gives good interviews and is is happy and, you know, all of that during other interviews. Not to say that he's not. But I think this interview in particular, it just really felt like he was so genuinely happy and excited and just felt good to be able to talk about this finally after all this time. And speaking of Superman, he kind of gave a little bit of, um, insight into how they filmed his cameo. We got some information recently from The Hollywood Reporter and um, uh, Henry Cavill uh, kind of went into a little bit more detail about that in this interview. He said that he had to get permission from the you know working on The Witcher because that's when he got the call. He was working on The Witcher, filming season three, had to get permission to halt, you know, to take a day off of filming that to go and film this, but he couldn't tell them what it was because it was so top secret that he couldn't tell them what he needed, you know, a day off of filming for. Um, but they granted it, obviously. 
and he filmed at the UK lot, the UKWB lot. Uh, we learned that earlier this week, but he went and he mentioned that it was a really secret um, set, very covered up, and you know probably two of I'm sure they have those kind of sets to avoid other people seeing a certain person on the lot or on set. Even though it was coming out, um, rumor, rumors were coming out within the past couple of months that he was seen on set in a suit. So, but he said it was a very secret set and, you know, people probably suspected, like he mentions in the interview, wonder if people suspected what he needed the day off for because he mentioned it was during the time, you know, all the, all the Comic-Con buzz was happening at that time as well. So it's just cool to hear about those kind of things. And he said it was very emotional and, you know, um, a cool experience to be both to put the suit back on. Speaking of the suit, he said that he chose the Man of Steel suit specifically because of the nostalgic, um, like attachment, the nostalgic, you know, memories with that suit. And that's where it all began. And that's why he chose the Man of Steel suit. So I don't think people need to be freaking out about the fact that it wasn't the black suit didn't have anything to do with the fact that they didn't want to, you know, use Snyder verse continuity. He specifically chose the Man of Steel suit because of what it meant to him. And I think that's, I'm glad that he mentioned that. You know, Josh Harwitz did say, of course, I'm going to ask because people want to know, but didn't expect really him to be able to give any detail. He did ask, is there, you know, anything he could share about the future of Superman, another Man of Steel movie, which we know is, we've already heard that they are, uh, that WB is, um, looking for writers to pitch stories and scripts. So we've been hearing that through the media, but you know, Henry specifically could not share any details at this time. He said that he will be able to in time, but for right now, he kind of has to keep everything to himself. And you know, amongst the group of people that do know the details, you know, can't learn about, we can't hear about that just yet, but he said that he is very excited to um, tell stories with a, with a very joyful Superman. And I don't, I mean, I really hope people don't take that to, don't confuse that with, um, you know, corny or cheesy or, or, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't like when people make that assumption that just because he's going to be a joyful or a happy Superman, it doesn't mean that he's going to be cheesy and like, you know, um, you know, the outdated kind of Superman. I just think it means he's going to be uh, confident I mean, just like we saw in Black Adam, he was warm. He was, um, he kind of had somewhat of a small, like a smile on his face in a little bit of a, you know, a little bit, but he was confident and it wasn't a confrontation against Black Adam. It was kind of just like, he understands where he's coming from. You know, um, he says, it's been a while since anyone's made the world this nervous. And it seems like he was talking about himself because he made the world nervous when he exposed himself to the world and all this destruction happened, and it was this big thing, right? Um, and he's an alien. He's from a different planet. <laughs> so I think he's trying to, um, he wants to be able to tell stories with Superman in where, in, you know, the way that Superman is hopeful and confident in himself and kind of feels more comfortable with himself in the world. Because he has said in a lot of interviews, you know, on, other, on press junkets for other films and other projects, that he wants to kind of be able to pick up from where Man is still left off and go from there and be able to, you know, kind of um, use that as a launching pad for where he wants to go with Superman. So it was, again, please watch it so you can hear everything that he has to say about it. I just love hearing him be able to talk about Superman. He mentions that he never gave up hope that it would happen again and that he would finally, that he would eventually be able to put the suit back on. So that's also good to hear. And I'm just so happy for him and happy to see him happy. And it's just awesome. He also kind of talked about Enola Holmes 2, which comes out November 4th on Netflix. Um, the Witcher season three, there's going to be a lot of action. And he said, and one thing I found interesting was when all of the things were coming out about him being the next James Bond, it actually came down to him and Daniel Radcliffe, who got the role, obviously. I didn't know that he was that close to actually playing Bond. I mean, I know that it was a big... Um, like there was a lot of talk about it, but I didn't know he actually came that close um, to playing James Bond. So I just thought that was an interesting, you know, little detail from the interview. In addition to that, he said that, you know, he will eventually be getting into producing. 
and that the time will come for that and he wants to kind of be whatever he does whatever he chooses to you know um start producing whatever it ends up being he wants to be there from the beginning to see it through whatever it ends up being that he you know when he decides to take on the a role of being a producer so um i like that they asked him that too because i had never really thought of that so that was a good question but i recommend watching the whole thing i just love how happy it is and you know how much joy it really is so contagious and it's like it's awesome that this is actually happening i'm so excited about it i couldn't wait to hear him talk about it so i'm glad he finally got the chance to couldn't imagine how hard it was not to be able to share anything and so um, thank you guys for watching. Check out any other videos you might have missed recently. There's been a lot going on. So there are a lot of things to catch up on if you've missed anything recently. There's some Green Lantern news that came out yesterday as well. So again, I'll put the link for this whole thing, for the whole thing in the description if you want to watch the entire interview. But um, thank you guys for all the support on the channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.